As Israelis mourn and bury their loved ones, frustration is growing due to the lack of a hostage for ceasefire deal. Anger is mounting over the government's failures and the lack of accountability in bringing our hostages home. Now joining us to discuss these challenges to unity in Israel today is former MK and founder of Yad Le'olim, Dov Lipman. Dov, thank you for joining us. As always, it's a pleasure to have you on, although I wish it was in better circumstances. Uh, I want to start by asking you, you know, you've seen what's happening in the streets. There's a massive strike today. Israelis are angry. Can you explain a little bit about why there is so much frustration today with the Israeli government? Absolutely. I mean, it's certainly a day of unbelievable emotion here in Israel. People are just devastated, even if we remove the politics from it, just to know that these six hostages lived for 11 months and, as of last Thursday, were presumably alive. It's very, very painful and it's very, very devastating. What's important to note, though, is that the country is absolutely divided on this issue. Of course, the protests make a lot of noise, and that's just the nature of demonstrations and closing streets and strikes. But there are two forums. One is called Tikva, one is called Gvura. One represents soldiers that have been killed, others that have children that are hostages who are saying no to a deal. And they're saying we have to show strength and keep showing strength. And that's the approach that we have to have. And in fact, the courts in Israel just ruled that the strike from the labor union was political in nature and it ordered everyone back to work. So uh, it, the country is very divided. It's a very emotional issue. I'm not here to give my opinion about it. There's merit to both sides of a really complicated issue against a monstrous terrorist entity called Hamas. And the country is divided. And then the emotions of the day just bring that to an even greater explosion. Now, there is division even within the government, not talking about the opposition and coalition, but within the coalition. What should be done regarding the hostages and what concessions can be made? Is there any way that these gaps can really be bridged in order to help bring these people home? To be very honest with you, and I'm sad to say it, not from a political place, just because I feel for the hostages and their families, I don't see a way for these gaps to close. The demand that Israel leave areas where we know with certainty that uh, the moment we leave, the terrorists will begin to smuggle in weapons, begin to fire missiles again at us, put our soldiers at risk. That's a decision which this government has made. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. There will be future deaths because of it. And that's exactly the struggle here. The struggle here is, are they going to kill the hostages right now? Or are they going to kill Jews and Israelis later? And that's really the battle here. I think both sides care about life. The big question is, do you risk things in the future by giving up very, very strategic areas, by releasing murderers from prison to get people back who are alive right now? And there's certainly merit to that. Or do you say, I can't do that because we have to show strength. We cannot leave these strategic areas. We have to be thinking long term. And right now, if you're asking me, Emily, I think that this government, uh, and I'm not saying right or wrong, this government has taken a stance which says we have to be thinking long term as well and long term strategically. And that, unfortunately, at the moment, given the nature of Hamas, means that I don't see how a deal to bring the hostages home can possibly be made. It's insane that we're dealing with this reality, but it seems it really is a Sophie's choice. It's, it's a lose-lose no matter what the Israeli government decides. At this point, what can Israel's leadership do to bring people together to unite the country in such a divisive and painful time? I'm so happy that you asked that question because that is what Israel needs more than anything else. Like you said, this choice is impossible. It's a lose-lose. We're in a very difficult place right now. But as a country, we can disagree. We can disagree with each other, but we have to find a way to disagree agreeably. Someone told me on Shabbat, I'll, I'll share it very briefly, it's in Hebrew, but the word yachad, which means together, can also stand for the acronym yesh chiluke deot. There are differences of opinion. And that's okay, we're gonna be that way, but the leaders need to be projecting that. And my own personal opinion is I think that we have to be tapping into the incredible inspiration that has existed during this very dark time. The unbelievable 
unbelievable soldiers, even the families of the hostages and families of soldiers. Uh, there's so much to learn from them in terms of their dedication to our people and to the cause and to somehow find that unifying point, which is we're all in this for the right reasons. We're all in this to try to figure out what's best for Israel. Let's constantly remind ourselves about that as we're having the debates, but not let it get to the point where it pulls us apart and we become weak because we are so polarized that we can't even sit at the same table together. Absolutely. Well, we are out of time, but Dove Lipman, thank you so much for joining us and for, in a way, your message of hope today. Thank you for having me. We should share good news one to the other.